Five months ago, we looked at the Clipper-focused Manta series of boards from Big Tree Tech, which I was really excited about. These removed the need for a separate board or computer running Linux due to their integration with the Pi CM4 or their very own CB1 alternative. The two biggest requests I have seen since the launch of the M4P and the M8P is a five driver version as well as a version that takes the Big Tree Tech Easy style drivers. Well, this past month, Big Tree Tech dropped the Manta M5P as well as the E3 EZ, filling that gap in their lineup. Big Tree Tech sent out their new Manta E3 EZ board a few weeks ago, which is the one that I have been the most excited about. In today's video, we will cover the board specs. We'll get it installed into the Ender 3 V2. I will share with you my thoughts on it, along with something I discovered that nearly destroyed the board before I was even able to get this printing. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printer models and is constantly expanding. I've been running their upgrades on a wide range of Creality printers for over two years now and have printed everything from standard PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they're based in the US and that all their products are machined in house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality that their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop in replacements in most instances. This helps expedite the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again quickly. Links will be in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. Much like with other Big Tree Tech E3 boards, the E3 EZ is intended to be a drop in replacement for just about any Creality 3D printer. Now I don't mean drop in in the sense that you take out your old board, put this new one in, and then you're just ready to go because that's certainly not the case. The main thing is, is that the E3 boards have the exact same mounting points as the Creality boards, which just makes installing them back into the machines much easier. Now, although this is a nice feature for Creality printers, this is by no means a Creality only board. It will work with any custom build or any 3D printer that needs up to five drivers. The E3 EZ is a 32-bit board with an STM32 G0 B1RE ARM Cortex M0 Plus chip. Much like the other Manta boards, it has a board to board connector that will allow you to hook up the Pi Compute Module 4 or their CB1. You also get access to 40 GPIO pins, giving you a ton of options for connections. For power, you can use a 12 or 24 volt input to power a heated bed and up to two hot ends. There's even an additional 12 to 56 volt higher power input if you're running drivers like the 5160 high voltage drivers. The E3 EZ comes with five slots for Big Tree Tech's easy stepper motor drivers. This was my first experience with them and there are some definite perks. They take up less space, don't require you sticking heat sinks onto them, they only go in in one direction and you don't need to fiddle around with any sort of jumpers to set it to SBI or UART mode. Big Tree Tech could not have made this board in its current footprint if they went with these standard step stick or Palulu style drivers. As for inputs, you get two USB ports, Ethernet, micro HDMI, SBI, as well as the standard LCD screen expansion. Two always on and three controllable fan ports. You have BL Touch, RGB, two filament runouts, power off relay, power loss recovery relay, ADXL specific header, as well as a port for the U2C if you plan on running CAN, which is a really nice addition. There are a ton of inputs on this board that should let you upgrade just about anything that you want on your 3D printer. The E3 EZ also has DSI and CSI connections, but they are only compatible with the CM4 and not the CB1. Also worth noting is that although this board is Clipper focused, you can totally run Marlin on it. So if you got this to try out Clipper and decided you didn't like it and wanted to go back to Marlin, you can do that. And Marlin mode or Marlin on here doesn't require the use of the CM4 or the CB1. This board is going into my Ender 3 V2, which has the Kevin AKA Sam belted Z mod along with the Micro Swiss NG extruder. I started with some IPA to help with removing the hot glue on the factory connectors and unplugged everything before removing the board. I initially installed the E3 EZ right back into the printer before plugging anything in, but discovered that I couldn't access the screw down terminals for the power input or the SD card slot on the bottom of the board for the OS. So I removed everything and did 
the initial wiring for at least the power and get the getting the OS image set up with the board on my desk. We did go fairly step by step through the process of setting up the CB1 in a previous video, so I won't touch on any of that here, but if you are interested, I will have that linked in the description down below. Other than that, I just plugged all the cables from the board into the new E3 Easy board using the provided diagram from Big Tree Tech. There was only two cables I had to do anything with. The layer cooling fan had a slightly larger plug than what the board wanted or what the board accepted. So I removed the pins from that and used the included connector. And then the heatsink fan on the stock Ender 3 V2 is set to always on. I went, I ended up crimping that and then just adding it to a controllable slot. So that way now the hot end fan only turns on when the hot end is actually heating up and it's not just on 24 seven. Big Tree Tech already has a GitHub repository for this board that includes a very detailed 34 page guide, including just about everything you'll need from specs to pinouts and various settings for specific setups. On top of that, there is a config file already created with all the pin mappings for an Ender 3 with this board, as well as a generic config that will really help to expedite the setup process. I just copied their provided Ender 3 config file over, made a couple of small tweaks because I have, again, some custom things on this printer, and I was ready to rock and roll. At this point, I was pretty excited, so I closed up the bottom of the printer, flipped it over, and this is when I ran into a big problem. After closing the bottom, I noticed that I was having a connection issue, which I originally thought was maybe the CB1 or the CB1's antenna, but after playing around with the antenna and resetting it a few times and not getting it to show back up on my network, I figured, ah, that's probably not what the issue is. Then I thought maybe it was my cheap micro SD card that was just having issues or even got corrupted. I was wrong. As mentioned earlier, you cannot access the OS micro SD card when this board is installed. You have to remove the board to access it. When I went to install the micro SD card back into the slot, I saw that the micro SD card slot was hanging there. It was still connected on the back, but one of the back legs was in the air and both of the larger front legs or front posts were completely separated from the board. At this point, I was shocked and had no idea how that could have happened. After inspecting the board, it looked like there wasn't any damage to the board and that all of it was just in the solder joint. So I grabbed my iron, a little bit of solder, and I soldered back both the posts and that one leg on the back of the micro SD card slot. I then restarted the printer and sure enough, the CB1 was back on the network and I was able to connect and control everything on my printer. Confused but relieved, I went to install the bottom cover back on the printer and I quickly saw what the issue was. The micro SD card slot is exactly aligned with the metal tab on the bottom housing. So anyone that installs the bottom panel, at least on their Ender 3 V2, is going to destroy their micro SD card slot because that metal tab will push a lot of force into the micro SD card, which then will apply that force to the slot and it will tear those legs out. The solution to this was quite simple. I took that tab, bent it back and forth a few times until it popped off, problem solved, but this is a pretty big issue. So far, I've only tested this on the Ender 3 V2, but I anticipate there can be other models of Creality printers out there that will have this exact same issue. I understand that space is tight for this board, especially with everything that they crammed in, but this seems like a pretty big oversight, especially considered that this is the E3EZ board, and this is an E3, it's the V2, but still, this is one of the printers that that board is targeted for. The micro SD card slot sticks out an excessive amount, and since you can't even access it when it's installed into the printer, I really don't see the point. If they had it more underneath the board or shifted it a little bit, they can avoid this from happening. I really like the E3EZ board, and for many that are using it for custom 3D printers or just other 3D printers, this might be a non-issue but there are plenty of Ender 3 V2s out there, and I worry that if left unaddressed, this is something that's going to be happening to most, if not all of those users. I'm happy that it seems like I was able to repair mine, but I really hope that Big Tree Tech is able to address this or implement a revision to prevent this from happening going forward. And that has been the E3EZ. I hope that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I will do my best to answer. And if I don't have the answer, 
I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to get that answer for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!